Ariel's going to talk about that first. <laughs> is it true or not? Oh, man. Um, okay, let me answer it this way. For a long time, I really was convinced that I was like, I was like, God, I don't know what's going to happen because I'm not going to date a boy because they were so cool. They were so weird. I'm not saying all of you guys are like this. <laughs> this my, my experiences. And especially like when they found out that I was a PK, like a preacher's kid, they would approach me and they would come with scriptures. And so I'm like, bro, I'm not like that. I'm very down to earth. Can you act like a normal person? Like, if you want to chase me, come at me with Bible quotes. Like, <laughs> that wears the, so I mean, yeah, it's true. But not all. I know it's not all. It's just my experience. <laughs> Obina, defend, defend the brotherhood. Yeah, I see. Yeah, on behalf of the Christian brothers, I apologize. <laughs> on behalf of all the Christian brothers in the world, because I know that it's true. Sometimes, okay, not entirely, but sometimes. Me, that you know, there are some people that came from the streets to the world. Like me, that's my story. I came from yeah. the streets to the world. So yeah. being on the streets, I picked up some things there. So coming in with it, it was a little bit different. But I know that. There are some people that grew up in a Christian home. They, they became born again. So they, they don't really have that. Um, so you will not blame them. Because, you know, last, last, everything has consequences. If you are looking for a certain kind of thing, you should get ready to, to expect a certain kind of thing. Because in the end, sir, what people call game, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's based on what the world has defined game as. Yeah, it's carnality sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes what they call game, it's that. But that's not which That's my that that's not always true. <laughs> I know there are some people that will come and tell you. I know I know of a lady that told me how she wants a guy that will come after her, but the guy will come and tell her, Oh, God said you are my wife. I mean, you just, I mean, I know that Pastor Key, you have said something about this before. You don't just go and meet somebody and tell, imagine yeah. I just text area this night and say, You know what? God, God said, said yeah. you are my wife. Yes, as I was watching you, as I was watching, I was you, watching you in the IG life, I heard yes. <laughs> I said, You are my wife. She's going to feel like, ah, you know, you're putting her in a, in a position where she has to struggle. In, in. So I think we do that a lot. Especially another thing is maybe we that are some, some people that are in the place of authority in the church. We do that too. Where we, you see a sister in the church because maybe you're a leader, you're a pastor. You go there, you say, oh, God said, and you now put her in a place where she doesn't know what to do. It's like you have backed her in the corner. But it shouldn't be like that. There should be ways that you should do these things. But come on, like... <laughs> God gave us storm for a reason. Wait, so, apart from this, so it's, but, but it's not as easy as I'm making it look for a lot of guys. But before Salem, I know Salem will defend all the brother. Before Salem talks, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Amy, I want you to think of think of the weirdest experience you've had, you've had or you've heard about. Okay, either you have experienced or the one you've heard about as regards this issue. So be thinking about it while Salem speaks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me not lie. I have nothing to say in defense of the brothers, you know, but uh, we know that the problems that exist are not without a source. You know, it's not like, you know, people are just trying to be weird or corny, you know. Um, but one thing I just want to say is that everyone who is a Christian has a responsibility to learn emotional intelligence, yeah. right? So we, we, we often feel yeah. like, you know, because we have god and we have the holy spirit and we have the word then that's all we need yeah but there's a certain way that we function in life it's the reason why when you go to a job interview you don't speak in tongues right mm -hmm. it's not because it's wrong to speak in tongues but there's a time and you, you don't and you don't mention your spiritual qualification you, you, you don't you don't tell them i have i have the gift of descending of spirit so it does <laughs> Let me lose this job. You know, you don't threaten them with all of that. You you know how to conduct yourself and you learned all of that. So there's mm. such a thing as worldly wisdom when it comes to actually pursuing a woman. And that's something we need to constantly be thinking about and improving at emotional intelligence as a whole. The fact that somebody is a Christian does not mean they don't want to feel wanted. The fact that she's a Christian doesn't mean she doesn't want to feel she doesn't want to be pursued. So these are all things that are very important. Whether you're a Christian or not, it still matters because we're human beings. And human beings have emotions. Human beings have preferences. Human beings have perspective. We have a whole background. There's things we prefer. You know, that 
Christian women too. The girl really have game like that. Ah, well, let's not. Oh, I know. Let's not. Let's just. Let's not open that can of worms. All of us have a lot to learn. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, but but um, before Ariel shares her experience, uh, um, for me, truly, when even when I was uh, in that dating scene, to be honest. Like Obina said, I also came from a very, you know, I was very hyper in the in the worldly system, you know, before I got saved. I was out there. I knew what's up. So when I became born again, um, I found it a bit weird how things were, you know, done. Um, people felt uh, you should even talk to the lady at all. Just go and pray and just come and tell her I have prayed. You know, like this, <laughs> I have prayed. And God has given me a yeah, fact, you yeah. don't even talk to her first. You don't talk to you talk to the okay. pastor first, you know. And so those were the backgrounds I came from. So and I saw and I found it weird because I understood then that I need to even talk to you, even if I feel God is leading me. I'm sensing it. I need to even talk to you to know if you know you are a human being. If we can have a conversation, that's what I felt, you know. So um, I, I I saw the awkwardness and I had a kind of woman I wanted. So I wanted a total mix of everything. So I wanted somebody that was spiritual, but still savvy, you know, had dress sense, was smart, was intelligent, was fun, because that's how I am. And even as a pastor today, um, you know, most people tell me I'm different from the usual, you know, kind of pastors, you know, because I, 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 I do content also. I do things that normal pastors don't do, you know. So... <laughs> You know, it, it's not common, but I, I, I think there is a lot of us, and for three of you here, I think we can start preaching that gospel more. I think there are a lot of us that want that want real life. In fact, part of our church's values, we have core values as a church. There are four of them. The first one is reaching out in love, which is evangelism. The other one is um, results, which is succeeding in life. Um, I'm forgetting the third one, but one of them is called real life. They're all letter R's. One of them is called real life. Because when I became a pastor, one of the things I wanted to see in Christianity is real life. I wanted to see people that understood that I can like a fast car, you know. I can like to dance, you know. Um, as long as I'm not dancing to vulgar music, I can like to dance. Um, those of you that, that, that people that know me and all that, I have convertible cars. I like fast cars. I like trucks. If you see my truck, fat tires, high lifted trucks and all that. You know, I like those kind of things. I, I don't think you have to be boring you know, to be spiritual. I think you can be spiritual and fun. You can be spiritual and exciting, yeah. you know. So I came into Christianity not finding a lot of that. You either met very carnal ladies and guys that were too carnal, you know, about their own way of having fun. Too carnal. They wanted to go to nightclubs. They wanted to take alcohol. They wanted to smoke, you know, in the name of being exciting. So that was too much. Then I had people that were too spiritual that felt... You, you couldn't listen to any other music except it was gospel music. They, they felt, oh, love music is even too carnal. And I said, God is the author of love. Mm. You know, as long as it's not vulgar music. So, because as a pastor, I always tease people. Whenever I enter somebody's car, they feel a need to put in gospel music. <laughs> and sometimes I tell them, I don't listen to gospel music all the time. So you don't have to play gospel music in your car because I'm in your car. Play whatever music you play normally. <laughs> you know, so... It was either they were too carnal on one side or too spiritual, too spooky, not even really spiritual, on the other side. So I think all of us here need to also preach and emulate and show that you can be a serious Christian and still be fun.